Hello everyone, it's Amanda. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am so pumped because we are bringing back one of my favorite series. I mean, it never really was an official series, but I did a couple videos a while back. I did one where I did 50 plus different bullet journal doodle ideas. I did different banner and header ideas. And today we are gonna be doing 50 plus different lettering enhancement ideas. I know. I'm super excited. I love lettering. I know you guys love hand lettering as well. Some of you might be wondering what even are lettering enhancements. By lettering enhancements, I mean stuff that you can add on to standard lettering or fonts uh, just to kind of jazz it up, pack more of a punch, add more of an impact. And it's not so much like lettering styles, although I guess it kind of is, but it's just stuff that are universally, uh, <laughs> words. It's little tricks that are universally applicable to most styles of fonts, whether it's cursive, sans serif, bold fonts, capital fonts, you name it. The combinations are endless. So hopefully this video gives you some sort of inspiration. Before we get into all of the lettering fun, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is super awesome and I'm going to be talking a bit more about why they're such a great resource to have a bit later in the video. But without further ado, I'm sure you guys are super eager to get started. So let's get right into it. Of course, we're starting off with my favorite category, the drop shadows. You guys know I'm a big fan of the drop shadow. I add these onto everything. They're just a really easy way to bump up your lettering style, whether it's for cursive or capital letters. This first one is what I like to call the floating drop shadow. As you can see, I just did a thin line on the right side of the letters, um, and it's not attached to the letters. Number two is a more traditional drop shadow. So it's like a thick black outline, but it's all attached to the main letters, and it looks like it's just hovering off of the page a little bit. The next drop shadow is kind of like a hollow drop shadow. It's very similar to the floating one, except this time it's actually attached to the main lettering. If you picture a white hollow version of whatever letters you're doing and then move it a bit down and to the right, that's what that looks like to me. Number four takes me back to my childhood. It reminds me of when I used to do block lettering as a kid. So you start off with whatever lettering you start off with. And then on every corner, you draw these little ticks all in the same direction. And then once you draw lines connecting all of those ticks, you can see it ends up looking like these letters are blocks. I did a couple different versions of these. So this one, you can see I did the exact same thing, drew the ticks and then connected them all. Except this time, I actually filled in those empty bits with some hatching. I followed the diagonal line, so they're all in the same direction, and it gives it more of a graphic look. I did a pretty similar thing for number seven with the hatching and everything, except this time it actually didn't have the black outline around the shadow. It gives it a bit more of an airy feel and still graphic, but just a little different. So for number eight, you're gonna start off with the same floating drop shadow as number one, except this time we're just going to repeat it a couple times. And this gives it more of a 3D look and the repeated lines are kind of cool and act as a little emphasis on the letter. Number nine is pretty easy and self-explanatory. It's the floating drop shadow, except the lines are dotted. Gives it more of a dainty, airy feel to the lettering. Number 10 is very similar to the block lettering, except this time you're going to pick a point at the top and then connect all of the corners of the letters to that point. Um, I roughly sketch this in with pencil first before I use my fine liner. Um, and then once you ink it all in, it makes it look like you're staring directly at these block letters and they're going far back into the perspective of that point. If you want to play around with something more graphic and bold, you can do the same type of block lettering except extend it out really, really long and then fill it in black so that the shadow kind of makes up the outline of the lettering. Um, and you can erase the pencil lines for the lettering and it ends up looking really, really dramatic. <laughs> A 
Okay, so now we're into the section that I like to call the inner line. So it's pretty self-explanatory as well. You just draw a line on the inside. I used white for this one on top of a color, but you can do white on black. Or you can also, like I'm showing you here, use black inline for hollow lettering. Number 14, I'm also drawing lines on the inside of the lettering, except I'm doing it all on the top corners of letters so that it looks like highlights. It makes it look like bubble letters. Moving on to the next category, which is the opposite of the inner line, we are doing an outer outline. <laughs> Here I'm writing whatever word and then I'm just creating a little bubble outline all around it. You can do the same thing but then repeat it a couple times so that it's a little bit more fun and funky or you can do the outer outline and then add a drop shadow to it if you want to get a little crazy and you know start mixing and matching things. That's another thing with all these lettering styles you can mix and match a bunch of them and come up with cool combinations. You'll see that I'm actually gonna show you guys a bunch of the combinations. So I outlined the letters and then played around with various drop shadows. And it gives it a different look than if you were to only do a drop shadow. It makes it stand out a little bit more and I don't know, it's fun to play around and see the difference between the letters, how one line can make such a huge difference. Number 20 is the hollow drop shadow with the outline. Number 21 is the hatched drop shadow. And then number 22 is the block letter drop shadow. But since I outlined the marker shape, it ended up looking a bit more jello-like, not really block-like, block, block -like, which I actually kind of like the look of as well. You can also flip it around and do the outline with the lighter color, so outside of your black outline. By the way, this blue color just is supposed to represent a lighter marker. All of these lettering styles use black, white, or the, some sort of color. For number 24, I'm doing an outline of the letters, except it's a little offset, so it's a bit lower and to the left. 25 is a dashed outline, which makes it look like it's a stitched on patch. Then similarly, number 26 is a dotted outline, but I actually played around with putting the dots closer to the actual lettering. This next one is really fun. I like to call it the confetti lettering. So you're gonna start off by doing some sort of hollow lettering, whether that's cursive or capital letters, and then around the outlines of the letter. So you're just going to put a bunch of dots it's kind of like pointillism and you're going to spread the dots out so that they burst outwards from the letters and it makes it look really cool. We've made it to about the midway mark of the 50, so I thought I would take this time to talk a little bit about Skillshare. If you guys don't know what Skillshare is, they're an online learning community with thousands of classes in design, business, technology, photography, illustration, you name it, they have a class for it. And it's perfect for this video because they actually do have a ton of classes on lettering as well. It's actually where I learned a bunch about lettering and calligraphy. So if you're interested in finding more content that's similar to mine, then Skillshare is definitely the place for you. Premium membership gives you unlimited access to all of the high quality classes so you can improve your skills or learn something new. And the best part is, is that Skillshare is actually one of the more affordable learning platforms out there. An annual membership costs less than $10 a month. That's like the cost of two coffees, which is crazy because you're basically getting knowledge and education for the cost of two coffees. So definitely be sure to check out Skillshare for yourself. If you click the link in my description box below, you can get a free two month trial. All right, so hopping back into number 28, we are going back to the inner lines. This one is a dashed line. I just forgot to do it in the inner line section, but I thought I would throw it in anyways, because this also makes it look like it's kind of stitched in. Actually, it looks kind of like a road, like a street with the lines that are marked on the street, but that's just because I chose to do black and white. Number 29 is pretty similar. It's a dotted inner line, except I only put the dots on the thicker portions of the letters, which tend to be the down strokes. For number 30, I did larger inner dots, and then I also added a drop shadow to make it look almost like a marquee letter. I think that's what it's called. For number 31, I did a mix of both the dashed lines and the dotted on the thicker portions and it adds a little bit of an extra flourish. Kind of looks a little elegant in my opinion. 
These next two are pretty simple. It's to fake having a brush pen if you don't have a brush pen. So you just add an extra line on all of the downstrokes. And this works even if you're not doing cursive lettering as I'm showing you here. You can fill it in or leave it hollow, whatever you want. The next couple of ideas that I'm showing you are in the pattern category. So if you want to fill in some lettering with some cool patterns, you can pretty much fill it in with any pattern you want. But the ones that I'm showing you are diagonal hatched lined. You can also do polka dots, stars, hearts, whatever your heart desires. For number 36, I did horizontal stripes, except I didn't go right to the edge of the letters, so it gives it kind of a cool look. For 37, I went in with my white pen and did horizontal stripes as well, except I made the stripes getting closer and closer together towards the bottom, so it made it look like it was faded out. This next one uses stripes as well, except these stripes are going in the direction of each stroke of the letters. So as you can see, whenever there's a vertical line, I'm doing multiple vertical lines. And whenever there's a horizontal line, I'm doing multiple horizontal lines as well. For number 39, I'm adding serifs to the letters. So serifs are those little ticks that you see me adding on the ends of the letters. So wherever you see the end of a line, that's where I add a little tick. I don't know what else to call them. And then for number 40, I'm filling in some hollow letters halfway to give it a half full appearance. I'm doing a white inline, but then at the bottom of the inline, I'm actually going over it with the black and kind of disintegrating some dots upwards so it looks like the inner line is fading upward. 42, I'm using a darker marker on top of the lighter marker and these both are kind of like the ombre section. is similar to the confetti one we did earlier except this time the confetti is only going towards one direction so in my case I'm going diagonally downwards and it makes it look like a pointillism drop shadow almost. These next two are what I like to call emphasis lines so the first one I'm following the curves of the letters and throwing in a couple of these dashes and it makes it look like the letters are moving. I also like to do this one where there's like sunray bursts from the corners of the letters. I think it's really cute as well. Honestly, number 46, I really don't like. Uh, at this point, I was kind of running out of ideas, but you can add little curly cues onto your letters. It did not turn out as well as I thought, but just an idea. Number 48 is another version of ombre, except this time the ombre is actually vertical lines. So I'm filling in the bottom solid and I'm doing a bunch of vertical lines and layering that so that it looks like it's fading into the darkness. Number 49 is the second last one and I'm adding white lines wherever there's an overlap. This way it looks like actually 3D and the strokes of the letters are going on top of each other. And then finally, number 50, it's the last one. This one's really hard to describe but kind of made the letters look like ribbons. So you'll see that I added extra lines and then wherever those extra lines are, I added shading as well so that it looks like the ribbon is going on top of each other and it looks more 3D. All right, everyone, so 50 different lettering enhancement ideas. I can't believe we made it. It was definitely a lot, but hopefully this helped you out in some way, gave you some inspiration, especially for when you're feeling a little creatively blocked. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that bell button and turn on notifications. You can also see some more art and lettering and calligraphy content from me over on my Instagram, at Amanda H. Doodles. But anyways, I'm going to sign off now. Keep doodling, and I will talk to you in my next video. Bye everyone.